The Global Circle event is bringing the best of American Jewish World Service to the forefront. Tell us about some of the things that you're doing. Thanks for asking. Um, well, we're in this event, we're trying to infuse an event with all kinds of AJWS spirit through interactive photos. We have a wheel of action. We also have custom tailored trips. Um, the first one was to Ghana last year. We had 15 young adults come with us. It was both a service trip and a chance to see grantees. We've done all kinds of events from meeting with grantees, doing a dinner with Ruth, to a, with a private chef, to larger events. Um, we did an event a few, last year with Nick Kristoff at HBO. And I think the, the purpose of Global Circle is to try to engage different constituents in a wide variety of means. I want to talk a little bit about impact because American Jewish World Service is known to be sort of like almost the first on the ground when there is a catastrophe, especially in Haiti. Um, tell us some of the, the impact American Jewish World Service is doing around the world. Um, well, that's actually a hard question because we work in 32 countries and we are raising a lot of money. This year we were a $45 million organization. We are giving away millions of dollars in grants. I think in Haiti, that's a big area, I know you mentioned it, um, President Obama in 2010 recognized AJWS's role in Haiti. I think that's one area. Another recent area is that one of our grantees that we work with, Lima Gubawi, she um, was just awarded the Nobel Peace Prize about a few weeks ago for her work in Liberia. So those are just two examples. We have over 400 grantees. So those are two examples of about 398 more of success stories and impact we're making around the world. And one of the things that is uh, critical is the, the next generation. And this event showcases that next generation. How do you get the next generation involved? Um, it's, it's hard work. It's awesome work. It's so important. I know it's something that lots of Jewish organizations talk about and everybody's trying to do. I think it's the right mix of finding how, where do you find the people, what kind of events you do to bring them in. You have to find the right mix of events and people. Um, I think it's about getting the right people in the room and bringing things that are actual content-driven events that people want to go to. I think that we've succeeded. We've been around for about two and a half years. We've had over 30 events. We've brought in over um, half a million dollars in new money in the past two years. And we've engaged over about 1,500 people just in New York alone. And when you, when you think of impact, even for like the, the younger generation, what do you think the younger generation is looking to do to, to create impact? Um, I think a lot of things. I think the younger the younger generation, they care a lot about impact. They ask really hard questions about numbers, how we're funding, where their money's going to, which are all great questions and all things that HGBS takes very seriously. We are constantly striving to continue being a four-star charity and that's meeting and exceeding people's expectations. I also think young professionals are looking for a way to get involved that feels real and authentic. They're not just looking for like fancy cocktail parties. I mean, they want co fancy cocktail parties, they want an opportunity to meet like-minded people in an interesting way that is meeting other people that is like learning about the world and a way to feel involved that goes above and beyond just their job and what they do every day. A way to feel like connected to the world. You serve on the steering committee and uh, one of the important parts about being involved in an organization is guiding the future. So tell us a little bit about why you got involved. Um, when I first found out about uh, the AGWS and the steering committee and Global Circle, I just attended an event that my friend invited me to. And I thought that there were events were a little more involved than the traditional Jewish charity uh, in New York City. It also had a little different slant than most. Most have take up very Jewish causes, um, looking to help out and raise money for Jewish causes in the state of Israel. This one was a little different because it used Jewish principles to help those less fortunate in the developing world. And I like that idea. Um, I like that it was a little more involved, a little more 
cultural, um, and so I started going to events and I liked what I saw and they asked me to join the steering committee. I'm very happy that I did. Hi, I'm Chloe Markowitz and I got involved with AJWS because I feel that helping those in need, whether it's through advocacy, service, uh, or grant making is critical and it's really important that Jews uh, help others that extend beyond our community, our own Jewish community. Well, first of all, I of course want to thank Pamela <laughs> and it was also horrible. And Emily for an amazing, amazing job that they did tonight. And of course, also, where are you, Jenny Goldstein and Katie Wilson? Jenny Goldstein, wait. I know you all probably got a million emails from both Katie and Jenny and myself. So good to know where everybody is. Um, anyways, uh, clearly they've done a lot of hard work for tonight. It's pretty amazing already, and this is just a small taste of what we have ahead of us for the rest of the night. Um, but really, most importantly, the most important people to thank are actually all of you, because without you, there would be no benefit, and there would be no global circle. So thank you so much for being here tonight. We realize everybody has very busy lives, and it's disgusting weather, so thanks so much. Um, and thank you very much for continuing to be such generous supporters of all the work we do. This is EJWS's 36th year but it's actually only the third year of Global Circle. And it's actually almost hard to believe when you consider our growth. Since we started in 2009, we've hosted over 30 events, including a night with photojournalist Ron Habib, an exclusive meet and greet with New York Times journalist Nick Kristoff, and theater performances where we were all able to have a special meet and greet with the cast of Fella. Additionally, this past summer, Global Circle had the opportunity to visit the White House to join the global conversation about social, social justice issues, a really big deal for Global Circle, and I think something that really speaks to um, the recognition that Global Circle is getting now nationwide. Um, and this past year, we've been quite busy. As hopefully most of you know, we've launched an amazing website. We took our first trip to Ghana, and we've been very successful with our fundraising efforts raising over half a million dollars since we began, and raising it from new donors. Global Circle is also growing in DC and launching in the Bay Area, so if you have friends and family and people who you think might be interested, um, please spread the word to friends in those cities because you can only grow with all of your help. We're looking forward to 2012, and we have lots of big and exciting plans in the works. In the coming months, please look out for emails about other, another exclusive film screening, a comedy night, a trivia night, just to mention a few things that we have in the works. Um, and after the success of our May trip to Ghana, I'm very excited to announce that we are planning our next second um, Global Circle trip, which is going to be to Uganda this June. So get ready, it's going to be really an amazing, amazing trip. And Truly, you're all here tonight because you're interested in the work that AJWS does. But the best way to learn about AJWS and to experience AJWS is to travel with AJWS. So really hope that we can see some of you um, learning more about the trip and hopefully traveling with us. Um, please, if we have any Ghana travelers, which I know we do in the room, if you travel to Ghana with us, can you guys just raise your hands? All right, that's a lot of hands that are raised so far. So if you're thinking about Uganda, you're thinking about future travel, people have name tags on, please go find them and ask about um, the time that they had. Um, finally, many people in the room are part of the Global Circle Steering Committee. And if those people could just take a moment and raise their hands, our last hand rising exercise. Great, okay. Um, they are gonna be wandering the room this evening, so please, again, if you're interested in getting more involved, come see me, come see Jenny, Katie, Pam, Emily, any really buddy with the name tag on, we'd love to see you at more events. And um, thank you again for being here tonight and continuing to support this organization's incredible work. The World Partners Fellowship, which is a year-long fellowship, um, and there were 10 fellows and we were all placed in different parts of the country. So I was living in Bombay or Mumbai, India. So I was in a 22 million person city um, working with migrant uh, construction workers and running non-formal schools on construction sites. Um, so kids are a very wonderful subject to photograph. It's hard to get them to stay still. But, um, but um, it was a really amazing experience to, you know, go on this fellowship through AJWS and have the opportunity to work with these NGOs that are doing grassroots work and, you know, working with communities there. Do you have a favorite picture? 
that are up here. Um, I guess I would say maybe up here, this is from the, um, the uh, crash, which is the daycare center. So it's birth to three years old. And um, they, on the construction site, there's not a lot of space, safe space for kids to move around. So once they're actually in the classroom, they're able to move freely and dance. And so in this particular photograph, they're doing their daily dance train around um, around the crash, and they're all kind of grabbing on to each other's uniforms. And there are babies sleeping in the background, and everything is kind of happening all at once. The way that the artisans are paid in, in this area is not with cash because oftentimes when women are given cash, they're either expected to invest it in their homes or to give it to their husbands. So instead they're given jewelry, they're giving earrings and bangles and necklaces. Um, and so, so throughout my time with this organization, I struggled a little bit in sort of finding my own voice as an artist, contributing my work to this or to the growth of this organization. Um, and at the end of my experience, some of the women that I had been working with presented me with earrings, um, which was really incredible for me because I had learned this whole time about how jewelry was a source of social capital for these women and when they got jewelry it, it helped them gain respect, it was a source of social capital um, and when they wore their jewelry they felt pride for their for their art like that's, you know, people saw their jewelry and that's how they ha felt their pride for their jewelry and when I received that, that gift from them I felt that pride myself so that was a really incredible experience event there are some interactive experiences and uh, we're here at the advocacy booth tell us about this unique experience this is the advocacy campaign wing we are inviting people to spin the wheel of action as part of our reverse hunger campaign reverse hunger campaign we're looking at the United States Farm Bill up for reauthorization in 2012 and we're inviting everyone from around the Jewish community to mobilize and sign our petition for a just Farm Bill. We're working together with domestic Jewish social justice organizations to say to Congress, we want a bill that fosters that fosters uh, independency, that takes away systems of dependency that are invested that are part of our food aid system. So this wheel of action are a number of different ways you can get involved in advocacy, and we hope that you can come sign the petition. We're asking people to spin it to get involved. The organization that we met with uh, was called uh, Whipson. Whipson, you might have heard of recently uh, in the news. Their founder just won the Nobel Peace Prize. Whipson promotes human rights and women's rights uh, and uh, help bring about uh, peace in the war-torn Liberia, one of AGWS's original grantees. We met People's Dialogue. People's Dialogue is an organization that works in Ghana slums trying to find a, a solution to poverty in some of the most um, dire of, of, of circumstances for people living in slums. We met with Sepper. Sepper is an organization in Ghana that is trying to promote and, and fight for human rights for the LGBTI community in Ghana. For those of you who don't know, uh, homosexuality is illegal in Ghana. Uh, like many African countries, their work is incredible and, and courageous. And lastly, we met with an organization called Challenging Heights. Uh, Challenging Heights is one of the most remarkable organizations we've met with. Uh, founded by a former slave, uh, a, a former child slave, uh, and their work is uh, to prevent child forced labor and rescue children who are in slavery, um, give them an education, give them a sanctuary, uh, and, and give them a, dig a, a, dig a dignified life. What was one of the most remarkable things about our trip, uh, besides hearing everyone's stories uh, and hearing their remarkable um, uh, the, their, their remarkable achievements and their nonprofits, was their gratitude and, and profound thanks for AJWS. Why? Uh, besides the money that AJWS gives, when AJWS takes a risk on a nonprofit in the developing world, it sends a message to other nonprofits. Uh, and most organizations that AJWS gives to or, or, or grants to uses the AJWS uh, grants and their name and their stature in the nonprofit world to, 
to raise more to, to raise more money uh, and continue their cause. I want everyone here to keep in mind that the amount of money that we're raising here tonight is basically equivalent to one grantee. The average grant for AJWS is approximately fifteen to thirty thousand dollars. That amount of money is what sustains the work that all these nonprofits are doing and is what gives them hope. In my view, I believe that when you, that when we stand with, with these people, when we tell them that we care, when we tell them that we'll fight for them for their human rights and their, and, and their right and their dignity to have uh, basic, basic human rights, uh, that's the best gift that we can ever give anyone. For those of you uh, who are interested in learning about more about AJWS and experiencing the profound impact that their work has around the world, I would encourage you to learn uh, to inquire about the trip to Uganda on June 7th of 2012. There's representatives by the raffle table that um, that will give you more information. Having been uh, on a trip with AJWS, I can tell you that it's one of those experiences that doesn't come around very often. One of those opportunities to expand your horizons uh, and really see the world in a much different way. Lastly, uh, I'm sure most of you noticed that there are various stations around the room. I would encourage all of you who are unfamiliar with AJWS's work to stop by one of these stations, check out one of the iPads, listen to one of the, one of the stories. And, and really understand why, why, why you're all here tonight. So, lastly, thank you profoundly from all of us at AWS for your support and for being here tonight. Enjoy. As you can see, Global Circle for American Jewish World Service is helping young professionals connect and make true impact around the globe. This is Aaron Herman. Thanks for watching.